Are you ready to do something with these guys? So, <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, dude, whatever. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pooh Brain Movie Reviews. It is our one year anniversary of the channel. So thank you all to everyone who's been watching us throughout the entire year. And we thought that we would revisit one of our older videos we did, where we all talked about horror movies we like to watch during Halloween. And today we're gonna do the same thing again, just a little bit more updated, spruce it up. Now keep in mind this is purely just our opinion. By no means are these what you have to watch for Halloween. It's not the best movies on Halloween, it's just the ones that yeah. we like to watch on Halloween. Yeah, this is us individually, personally, what we like to watch on every Halloween when it comes around time. And this is throughout the month, not just on Halloween itself. So first on our list we have A Nightmare on Elm Street, the original, and we're gonna bunch it with Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. Definitely probably the most two influential the Freddy Krueger movies. Four and five are good, they're decent together. I, I, but one and three. Three is what really turned the series yeah. into the wise crap. The money making yeah. machine that it became. I mean, you barely saw Freddy's face in the first one. They, you see his eyes. It was be creepy. That's what yeah. the one was about. Yeah. yeah, it was more. It was definitely more creepy. And after that, they it was made it more. Then three more. He was out there making jokes more comedy, and shit, yeah. having fun with it, but having not, fun with his death. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, but not quite to the part with like four or five, where it was like total comedy. There yeah. was scary moments in three, and they used it pretty well. And three has some really actually interesting and clever deaths. <laughs> oh, welcome to prime time, bitch. Yep. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the drug addict girl. The drug addict with the. Yeah. <laughs> the puppet. The puppet yeah, kid. The puppet the puppet, yeah. his things and yeah. It's probably the most creative Freddy Krueger kills. Yeah. In the entire series. The other ones, like I said, they're a little bit more cartoony. Yeah. These ones were simple but sweet. Nightmare on Elm Street 1 though, looking back on it, it's not the fun Freddy Krueger. No. So it's like it's, it was more serious, more creepy. Yeah, there's, there's no creative there's no real I mean like the Johnny Depp, the blood coming out of the soul. The, that's mm -hmm. a fucking like iconic thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much the most you're gonna get out of that movie. That's yeah. it, because the other deaths was pretty. Well, sweet. the other one was alright too. The one with the girl. She got sliced up and tossed around. And stuff. Yeah, well, the, 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 the guy and the, yeah, the boyfriend had just choked up. Right, and then the first one, since you know they could, I guess they couldn't do it at the time. We really could see what was happening in those dreams, see what was actually happening to them. True, right. Yeah. They were not in the dream world. So we don't, we don't, we ne we'll never know what happened to Johnny Depp that he came out in a pile of blood. The reason why I like three actually better than one because they were kind of they weren't on equal footing with Freddy, but they kind of stood a chance. Yeah. Because they each had their own individual powers, powers. and if they were clever enough, they figured out how to actually use yeah, their advantage at it. Grow. I'm bad and beautiful. Oh, she was useless. She was like, she only did what? She, she punched him. She's her name's Power. Twice, and that was Power was gymnastics. That's it. That's it. That's it. For a little bit. It is it. Like she was doing the flips and, and she survived, actually. Well, the wheelchair. Flipped her into an oven. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, after, after that. The kid in the wheelchair was the wheelchair. He ended up the dragon. The wizard. Dragons, the wizard. Yeah. Yeah. But that was dragons. kind of quick. He goes, I don't believe in you. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> and King K, super strange. Then we got, we got uh, Hellraiser 1 and 2. Pretty much we bumped them together because they do go together. They are pretty much just a continuous movie. Arguably probably the only two good ones. Maybe you can make an argument for three. After that, it gets kind of dicey. As a part of like one and two was, was more, more of a more, psychological. Yeah. It was more... More closely based on the book. And one has like genuinely creepy moments when uh, Frank is wearing her dad's skin. And cool. he's like being super it's creepy. Very creepy. With a little rapey. Yeah, <laughs> what it is. Little right. It is good to watch them all together because, like, I love I love when horror movies do that with sequels where it literally goes into the next day. Mm -hmm. Right. So you you can actually technically watch it as one big movie, which would be a long time because they they are quite long. Uh, Howard's two probably a better movie. Um, I do like bigger two better. a bigger budget, so they can do more. There was more things they explored upon. Well, two, you see the Cenobites more. You well, see they were they were, they were in hell more too, right? Yeah. Or two. So you see well, there with the uh, Leviathan. The Leviathan. Okay. Yeah. Right. You get to know what the Cenobites look like before. They were yeah, the actual story behind them. Yeah. Cause one doesn't really one you kind of put yourself in um in Kirsty's shoes, Kirstie's shoes yeah. because she kind of just discovers them and you're like, oh, what the hell is this? Yeah. And they don't really tell you. But in, in the next one, you find out more they about explain a lot more about yeah. the thing. And the effects, I mean, Clive Barker's effects. They, I mean, they are always awesome. It's so visceral. Yeah. <laughs> and gruesome. Yeah. And it holds up. Uh, next on our list, we have good old fashioned pumpkin head. Part one. <laughs> Pumpkinhead one. Just one. Just one. No, no, just one. Lance himself. Lance <laughs> Okay. Stan Winston, the creature master. Pumpkinhead personally is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. The story of Lance Henderson's child dies, and then he tries to get vengeance upon the kids. So he goes to this old crackly witch, witch uh -huh. raises up Pumpkinhead to seek revenge, and then turns out he's entwined with Pumpkinhead. Yeah. I think it was one of the first directed movies by Stan Winston of of course the uh, creator of the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park and the creature itself is absolutely awesome probably one of the best creatures in horror movies plus it was fully 
It was a suit. It moved very well. Yeah. It had like a style to it. And just the setting of it. It was, it was such a dreary movie. Mm -hmm. It was always like hazy and foggy. But that's know. good. That's how anyway. it's supposed to be. You know, like, oh, it's great. Yeah. Think, like, oh, what's going to happen next? And so it's just a good tale that, you know, Lance Harrison sees what Pumpkinhead sees and feels what Pumpkinhead's mm -hmm. doing. You're in it for the creature effect. You don't really see it that much until the end, but when you see it, when you there. see it, it's it's awesome. You know, the face is fully animatronic, mm -hmm. so you could see every movement in it. Later sequels, they kind of dropped the ball on that because like they didn't want to spend Stan Winston money. The CG did up. Oh, well, yeah. except for two, except for two, two, two just... they cut him in half. <laughs> just just top of... You just saw the top part yeah. of it in part two. They cut him in half in two. Our next movie is going to be Halloween one. And surprisingly, Halloween 3. Really? 3? I love Halloween 3. All if right. you get past the fact that it's not Michael Myers and you just watch it as a standalone movie, it's actually a really, really good, fun Halloween movie. Okay. Well, Halloween 3 is actually what John Carpenter had originally wanted. Yeah, he wanted them to be anthology films. Ah. Right. But people got so upset that Michael Myers wasn't in 3 that they kind of had to just keep going with Michael Myers. I am not a fan of three, but I respect three, and I respect the reason why people like three. I, like I, I get it, you know, something different. They just tried to kill people through TV, right? Isn't that it with the mask? Either. The mask initiated, and they well, kind of just melted and turned yeah, into the bugs and shit. Halloween one, of course, is the, the classic one, the one that everybody knows, Michael Myers. The quintessential right. slasher. You know, I like because they, they let you see through his eyes mm -hmm. as he went through around the stuff. I yeah. killed. I personally was not that much of a fan of Michael Myers. I liked the first movie. I never really got into Michael Myers after like um, after two, pretty much. That's why I like three because it was like a fresh thing. It was just different. I, I never really was into Michael Myers that much, but on Halloween time, I mean, of course, you kind of like Halloween. <laughs> In the fucking title. <laughs> you gotta watch this one. Basically, like Michael Myers uh, is probably like the jaws of horror movies. So I mean, it is very essential to watching. Unlike Jason, you know. he's always like in the shadows and he waits. Yeah. So I, I like that aspect of it more because Jason is just kind of there, just goes steaming straight ahead. Yeah. yeah. Michael Myers, you'll see him in the background just looking at you, and then he disappears, yeah. and you don't know where the fuck he goes. Exactly. Michael Myers is also a normal man. Maybe debatable. <laughs> debatable. What well, Michael? Well, Myers? in the first two, he was. After that, they, they just voodooed him and everything. He's about as much as a real man as Jason was a real man to begin with. <laughs> I mean, Jason was a real man, but he wasn't a real man. No man gets hung and beaten, stabbed like that. Our next movie on our list is going to be Trick or Treat. The, probably the best Halloween anthology movie. Intertwined, a bunch of different stories that all take place on Halloween. They're all pretty much connected um, somehow, and it's pretty much just Sackboy making sure Halloween goes according to plan. Surprisingly, it was surprisingly <laughs> good. I wasn't expecting it to be good. It was surprisingly good. It's creepy. They have good effects. Yeah. Probably the best anthology that intertwines every story. Yeah. Right. You have the spirit of Halloween, which is Sackboy. You have ghosts. You have werewolves. Uh, serial killers. And they all somehow intertwine within this world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The best than any anthology I've ever seen, I think. Because yeah. most anthologies, you don't get that. It's usually just like people telling random stories and then there's like an overall movie going on. Like I said, it, it's a good gateway movie. There's nothing too over the top in it. Violence, there's blood in it, but nothing too crazy. Um, next on our list we have Child's Play 2. Well, you gotta explain this one because you were the one that picked 2. Yeah, 2 is just basically you following Chucky going after Andy all over again, but this time, after what happened in part one, Andy's living with a foster family. When he struck the factory. Struck the factory, went down to the machine, yeah. and that's how he came back. Yeah. He came back to the same doll. <laughs> yeah. That they same. scraped up and put new parts on him. I, I, mean, I didn't really like too. one that much. You didn't like one? Why not? Well, one, one, I think one was better than part two. I didn't like it that much. I mean, I liked two when he killed a teacher. Yeah, he, it was his, his... That was pretty funny. He was more of a smart ass in two to me than yeah, he wasn't one. Much like Freddy, Freddy Krueger. Right. right. Well, he was, he was like actually becoming Chucky. the Chucky we know. Right. Comedy and shit like that. That's yeah. why I think part one was better. I think I like I like the more, more serious, scarier, Chucky. creepy shit. You yeah. know, you know, you know he just hide the soul. He just Yeah, because you don't really see Chucky move until late in that movie too. Right, no, I know, but yeah. I think that's why. I think that's why I like it. Just you know, like, oh, pop like, up like, oh shit, the fucking dog running around, you know, like, you know. I like check the batteries in part one Right, and part two I mean part two was good, but I think part two would just it's getting to that, like, shit. Get into that little smart ass comedy. Like, I yeah. always have a problem remembering part two. Like I remember the old arc. You know, I always remember. I always forget like what happens in it because I always go to one and three. Like yeah, I remember yeah. his sister swing on the swing, mm -hmm. and then the, the, she kicks the dirt, and she sees her good guy doll buried, and she's like, right. "Oh shit, who's this?" Pretty much all the child's plays are good except for um, Bride. I don't really like Bride, and I don't like the Seed. The newest one was fine. Oh Curse yeah, of Chucky. yeah. Curse of Chucky was actually pretty good for what it was. Um, next on us we have good old fashioned Candyman. I like Candyman. Tony Todd's voice was creepy as all hell when he talked. It's like if you have a good surround sound system and you have it on Blu-ray. It'll sound like he's talking to you in your ear, trying to mess with you. Candyman was kind of like the, uh, the Bloody, Bloody Mary. Mary. Say his name how many times? Three? Five. Three. Or five? Five. five? Five times. He shows up behind you and he hooks you with his hook hand because he's missing a hand. Yeah. The story was because he was a, a slave guy like the white guy, a white, a white woman, and then he got caught 
They cut his hand, cover him in bees. Honey, 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 and the bees came and um. They made him look at the mirror at himself. Yeah, right. that's, why, that's, okay, why that's, that's why. That's why. That's why he's cursed to the mirror. Now the Candyman <laughs> series is another series that kind of got dragged out a little too long than it needed to be. It only needed one. I was. I feel Candyman was good as a one-off. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, the first movie it was they toyed with like. He kind of was like invading her, and then it was like, well, is she the killer? Is right. it really him happening? Is she just seeing this thing? We also have on our list the 1980 version of the Blob. Everything he eats, it gets bigger and bigger, and the only way to kill it is by freezing it. Yeah, it's basically the story of a meteor that fell. A meteorite that fell. A meteorite fell earth, down, and, and a, a bum found it, and, and the bum got caught his arm. Yeah, ate the bum, then ate somebody else, and it just kept on. Going and no, going no. and going. Nothing was safe in that movie. Yeah, that movie doesn't get enough really credit because everyone, when you think of the blob, you think of like the old like nineteen fifties black and white, the black and white blob, um, yeah. which was all right. But this one, they really went for like the oh, the gruesome deaths in it. Yeah, yeah. Can you see the melting of the face? You kids see the eyeballs and, the, the, the and the kids. Theaters. Yeah, it really is an mm-hmm. extreme movie. It doesn't really get talked about a lot they when you bring up like eighties. Horror movies, yeah. well, you know, I mean, people talk about it because during that time it was basically like the Freddies and the Jasons. Well, everybody was, and Michael Myers, everybody was more of the slasher instead of the blob. That's what yeah. it was. It, it was more of like right. a science fiction movie, but there was really a lot of horror. Movies. From the guy getting stuck in the sink, he sucks him right into the sink. Yep. From the when the lady gets caught in um, the telephone booth. Just crushes his hand right there. One of the better, one of the older remakes, and one of the better remakes. Also, also we have coming up <laughs> Planet Terror on our list. Um, you really? Grindhouse. One Grindhouse. half of the Grindhouse, because uh, there was a, a gas leak that happened when a, t- a team of military people killed Osama bin Laden, <laughs> and a gas leak happened, and they were just... It really shows its age at that. <laughs> <laughs> they were turned into putty or something. I don't know what they were turned into. It's a good gross out zombie movie. The characters are all pretty much phenomenal in that movie. There's like not, not really one boring character in that movie. Rose McGowan. <laughs> Rose McGowan. With a machine gun uh, leg. Um, but it really has some interesting and funny deaths. Yeah, it's definitely over the top. But I mean, it has like really good action set pieces also. Certain scenes that are cool, like uh, El Ray with his uh, his butterfly knives and him just running to the hospital with the gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the while killing everything just to get to his girlfriend. Yeah, and it's, and it's a, a movie get going. Yeah, it, it, It's it, a very well-paced zombie movie. Usually in zombie movies you get that lull. This yeah, one you just kind of go. It goes all the way. Yeah, and of course it's the better of the two Grindhouse movies, I believe. And, and you know you still get you get that feel. That's probably the first movie that started to do the reviving of the dirt look and the the cigarette burns and the yeah. scratchy um, yep. visuals. It's aesthetically awesome to look at, also, as, and also just with the movie itself is just a pretty good movie. You know, Ghoulies two on our list. <laughs> Why you that. gotta take a deep breath for Ghoulies? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm um, sorry. Okay, me. Ghoulies two. Go ahead, Alan. Yeah, <laughs> Ghoulies two. I mean, you gotta have a taste for that kind of old school hokey yeah, shit. No they were a rip off Gremlins. Let's face it. <laughs> they were Gremlins, just terrible. It's such a cheesy movie. But it puts a smile on my face. I Only guess. two. I don't really like. I mean, I do like part one, but part one is a slog to sit through. Yes, it is. It's very boring. Yes, it um, is. It's nonsensical. Part two is more of the actual. It's actually about the ghoulies. As part one was about the magicians and all that, whatever. Right. It's about the ghoulies just being in a sideshow carnival and having to deal with it. That's pretty much the whole movie. <laughs> now, if you're for a more fun mood, I mean, it's, it it's, it's fun. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. It's really cheesy. It does not hold up very well. <laughs> Finally on our list, we have a good old American classic, Hatchet. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Over the top slasher. Tell the tale of Victor Crowley. It's Jason in the Swamp. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's almost the same like, kind of story. But the form way kid. more gruesome. Yes, the way, way, way more gruesome. <laughs> Ridiculous <laughs> kills. That. Ridiculous <laughs> kills. Um, mostly one as opposed to any other ones. I mean, I like them all because they all take place at the same all, time. Yeah, and they, they all pretty much keep the same aesthetic and they keep the <laughs> same tone throughout all three movies. And all three movies literally take place in the span of three days. So you can literally watch all three of them back to back and not like miss a beat on any of them. The series went on. They kind of went more and more over the top of the deaths. Mm-hmm. The first one had the right amount of over the top. It's probably one of the most violent movies out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's it's Kane Hodder being... It's Kane Hodder being exactly. So you get you Jason pretty mm-hmm. much. Yep, you have uh, Robert England in the beginning of the movie. Tony, Tony Todd. Tony Todd. So you had, you know, three of three of the big horror classics. But I mean, the humor is on point. The humor is really good in the movie. Yeah. It knows how to take itself lightly and want to take itself seriously. Yeah, they all have their if, own if you're into them. the slasher, if you're into gore, it's probably one of your best options for a gory killing a killer movie, especially nowadays, which they don't really do very much. <laughs> no. Because that's what it is. It's, 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 a, it's like a throwback to like the old school Jason's before he got, you know, PG'd up a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd probably pick Hatchet over most of the Friday the 13th movies. Well, we were debating whether to put Friday the 13th on there for Halloween, but then again, but Friday the 13th movies, they tend to all be the same, except for like the later ones, which got a little, but when they became different, they were really bad. 
Yeah, like with the I'm exception, like 13 with the exception of like four and six, I'm pretty much gonna pick Hatchy over them. You know, goes to Manhattan. I mean, come on, goes man. to Manhattan for like three minutes. Because he's in the city. You mean he went on a boat? You mean you mean, you mean Jason goes on a boat? <laughs> Jason went on a cruise. You on a cruise? He did a vacation from a uh, freaking. Uh, you mean Jason camp. films in Vancouver pretending to be Manhattan? Yeah, I do like Jason, but but his movies literally are all the same. His movies became mm-hmm. more. Freddy spruced it up. Jason yeah. never really spruced it up. <laughs> never, never, never changed. He was just a walking killing machine, and that was literally it. Dang. Victor Crowley was a little. Cr- I mean, no, not like with the Crowley. He was a little but, bit more creative. <laughs> he was a little more visually striking. And he had a much like Jason. He had a haunted backstory. So yes, you understood why he. And his environment was a little bit creepier than just the crystal. Good old Louisiana swamps. Because oh. it wasn't him killing you. You had alligators to watch out for. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, that that is pretty much our list of Halloween favorites that we have that we like to watch um, during the entire month of October. October, especially around Halloween. Let us know what you guys think about them below. Uh, have you seen any of them? Do you want to see any of them? What are your favorite ones you like to watch on Halloween? Um, hit us in the comments below and we'll see you guys next time.